How you doing today, folks? Today I want to talk to you a little bit about what I'm going to call the three myths of sharpening a chainsaw. For most of my life, I've been trying to master the art of using, of using a file to sharpen a chainsaw. And today I want to show you some of the myths that if you go by the book or you read the directions, they're going to kind of steer you in the wrong direction, for lack of better terms. So these are some, some quick tips that might help you get ahead in your, your efforts to sharpen a chainsaw. And the first thing I want to say is, you know, this is a power tool. This chain is spinning very fast. I see so many videos on YouTube where people just do really stupid things with a chainsaw. And, you know, read the manual, know what you're doing. Some of these things I see happening just should never happen. I don't want somebody who just got a chainsaw, who maybe doesn't work with power equipment a lot, to just grab their saw, think they're gonna sharpen it up and get going. Uh, because that is just, that's just not the way to go. So with my little disclaimer out of the way, the other thing is, is I should be wearing gloves. Whenever you sharpen a saw, you should be wearing gloves. But the first myth of chainsaw sharpening is you know, when you see dust come out of your, your saw, that means you need to sharpen it. Well, I sharpen a chainsaw much more often than that. You know, I basically sharpen the saw every time I fill the uh, tank with gas, I do what I call maintenance sharpening on the saw, which is anywhere from two to four strokes, just enough to bring that edge back. So it's my goal to keep the saw as sharp as possible at all times, not have it like super sharp and then get dull, 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 and then super sharp, dull, 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 dull. I wanna keep it super sharp pretty much all the time. So that's the first myth, is don't wait till you see dust, folks. Sharpen it every time you fill up with gas, just a little sharpening, just enough to get that edge back. The second myth of chainsaw sharpening, and every manual since the dawn of time says this, is to take the same number of strokes on the teeth when you're sharpening the chainsaw. Well, folks, I want to just come right out and say that is wrong. If you look at anybody's chainsaw that hand files, if you look at the teeth, you'll notice that there's always one side that's a little longer or a little shorter than the other. Because, folks, we just do not sharpen the same way, you know, when we're sharpening. When I'm sharpening on this side, for me, this is my weaker side. So when I'm sharpening on this side, I end up leaving the teeth longer and also with a hook. Now when I sharpen on the other side, I end up getting a much more blunt edge on it and I remove material quicker. So these teeth are usually shorter. It's not use the same number of strokes every time you file, but what you wanna do is remove the same amount of metal every time you file. And let me just move the camera in and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about what I was just talking about. So the first thing I wanna say is yes, I do keep my files in a straw when I'm storing them in the toolbox. That way, I, uh, I keep that edge. Now, the chain you're looking at is a milling chain, so if the angles don't look quite right, and it's also a skip tooth chain, there's two teeth between, two drive links between each tooth. So if it doesn't look, you know, the same as yours, this side feels like it's my strong side, but when I'm sharpening this side, I end up taking less metal, and I also end up driving the file deeper into the gullet there so I get more of a hook on this side so when I'm sharpening when I'm sharpening on this side on what I would consider a maintenance sharpening it takes me four strokes I'll do four light strokes for a maintenance sharpening on this side as opposed to when I do this side and it only takes it only takes two light strokes so while I do agree you want to you know, remove the same amount of metal on each side, I disagree. It's not going to be the same number of file strokes unless you've really trained yourself well to take the exact same file strokes. I haven't quite done that. Now the last thing I want to show you is with these file guides and you know I really thought at some point in life I would end up abandoning the file guide and be able to just free file and I really do think that, you know, I could do this, I could definitely do this for um, three or four sharpenings, but eventually I end up losing the angle. So I kind of like to go back to this file guide, or I use this file guide basically all the time, and hopefully little by little I'll wean myself from it, but I will never, I will never throw out these file guides because they're just so handy to have, uh, you know, to get those angles back. 
So when we're filing this side, the last thing, when you read the directions for the file guide, they say to rest the file guide on the tooth. So you see this edge of the file guide is resting on the tooth. Now that works pretty good most of the time, but what'll happen is sometimes either you'll, you'll sharpen your saw wrong so your tooth won't have a straight line across it, or your rakers will get, be too low and you'll start undercutting the teeth. So what I end up doing is not all the time, but if I'm having, if I'm doing a lot of strokes and my teeth aren't getting sharp, I will actually take the file guide off that bottom tooth a little bit and use that. You can really straighten the edge of the tooth out quickly if you do it that way. And I guess that's the other myth because there have been times when I've been just really undercutting teeth with this file guide and I couldn't figure out why. But then as soon as you just lift it up off the teeth a little bit, get that nice straight edge back, it works much better. And that's another one that, you know, with both, with both sides of the teeth, you know, most of the time you leave it on the file guide, but if you're having trouble keeping that edge or getting that edge, lift it a little bit off that front, that front raker and run it across the teeth. It's going to make a difference. So those are the three myths of chainsaw sharpening I just wanted to dispel for all you guys that are learning how to do it by hand. Number one, remember, don't sharpen when you see dust, sharpen before you see dust. I really like to do a touch-up edge every tank of gas. Give it a try, I think you're going to like the results. The second myth of chainsaw sharpening is you don't take the same number of strokes on each side of the chain. You want to remove the same amount of metal on each side of the chain. As you're sharpening, whichever side you notice getting more metal taken away after three or four sharpenings, you'll see one getting longer. Do less strokes on that side and keep the strokes the same on the other side. And eventually you'll, you'll find the ratio that works good for you. You'll never have it perfect. I still, after every five or six sharpenings, have to take a little bit more off one tooth. For me, I actually take half the number of strokes on one tooth, one side, than I do on the other side. And then the final myth of chainsaw sharpening and the directions say, you know, run that file against the depth gauge every time. And I just want to say sometimes if your tooth is so screwed up that it's just not working or if you're digging under and you've got a lot of hook in your tooth, you got to raise it a little bit off the tooth just to kind of just to kind of even out that tooth a bit and get a nice fresh edge back. You know guys, I, I don't really feel like an expert on chainsaw sharpening. I know there's guys that you know do this all day every day. If you'd like me to make a video about you know how I sharpen the, a chainsaw, I'd be more than happy to, you know, let me know below. So have a wonderful day, folks, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take it easy.